Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can randomize the scale of spawned objects within a specified range in our Unity project. Let's check it out. So what we've got here is we have a really simple little scene. We have this robot guy sitting on a single rock island. The rock is from the Kenny Nature Pack. I've added the model into the repository. Shout out to Kenny. He's a great asset creator. And so what we are doing here is we're going to spawn a little field of these rocks. So let's take a look. We can see we're spawning this kind of randomized rock formation. Let's maximize for a sec. And if we hit space, we can respawn and get some different rock configurations. I've added a plane with a kind of semi-transparent blue material to simulate water, right? Just to make the scene a little more visually cool. Notice that the rock that our robot is standing on is rotating, but not respawning, right? Not being rescaled. Uh, and that is just to avoid having him get clipped into the rock. But here, right, we're just generating these randomly scaled, positioned and rotated rock formations, which I think look pretty cool within this low poly style. I think we get some nice organic rocky looking shapes that could work for something, right? And so this is actually based on a single rock. So if we go into our prefabs, we have our rocks master rock. We can see it here. It's just a really simple little low poly rock model. I replaced the material with like a little bit of a darker gray material. And what we're doing is we're using this scatter spawner rocks game object. This is the item area spawner that we used in a previous uh, procedural content generation basics video. The item that we're spreading is the master rock. We're doing 20 instances of it and we're spreading. And we're spreading them. And we're spawning them. We're spreading them over an area of positive 15 and negative 15 on the X and positive 15 and negative 15 on the Y. So when we spawn those, here we have our randomized scale script. And this is the new piece in the context of the um, procedural basic series. Uh, and then we're also rotating only along the Y axis, right? We could try rotating along the other axes and it's gonna look kind of crazy. We can just see what it looks like. But because these rocks are designed to be flattish, they look a little weird when rotated this way. Honestly, they're not, it's not that bad. You could throw in a few of these maybe. I think in a video game context, the earlier version is probably more playable and usable. Something like this is kind of cool, maybe with some fine tuning there could be a cool result here. But so what we've got is we've got our rocks that are being spawned. And then here we have our randomized scale. So let's talk about this. It's really simple. Basically, we have a global scale multiplier. This is something that I found useful. Sometimes you don't want to go down and adjust all of these values. You just want to kind of scale up and down the whole thing. So this is just a multiplier that will multiply all of these values by itself. Then we have the choice to scale uniformly or not uniformly. I'll turn this off. I think for different types of things, this may be more or less appropriate. Here you can see now they're getting squeezed and stretched a little bit more. It produces a quite a different result. Again, some of these might be cool as a mix with some of the more regularly uh, structured ones, right? That could be an interesting option. But I think that this basic form is actually working pretty well. And also in the context of a video game, it's giving us lots of nice flat surfaces to move over, which I think would be a good for gameplay as well. So we have the choice of modifying the axes individually, X minimum, X maximum, Y minimum, Y maximum, and Z minimum, and Z maximum. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the code for randomized scale. If we open it up in Visual Studio, we have our global scale multiplier, all of our public fields that we just reviewed in the inspector. There's no private fields in this case. We're calling randomized object scale from start. That's because this is a simple scene and there aren't really any questions about order of operations or having to make sure that things happen in the right sequence. In a more complicated example, I would probably have an initialize function that gets called from somewhere else so that we can make sure it happens at the right time. But in this case, using start is fine. And then we're calling our randomize 
object scale function, which is where the scaling actually happens. So here we just declare a new vector three called randomized scale. That's what we're ultimately going to apply to our object once we've made changes to it. And then we check, are we scaling uniformly? If so, we're gonna generate a single float value, which we'll use for the X, Y, and Z axes. We're scaling uniformly. We use the same number for each of them. So we generate it once and then apply it in this next line of code where we set randomized scale to equal a new vector three with uniform scale in each of its axes. Then if we're not scaling uniformly, then we're gonna set randomized scale to equal a new vector three with a random dot range using the individual axis values, creating a unique value for each axis. Once we've decided how we wanna randomize our scale, then we are going to apply that value multiplied by our global scale multiplier back to transform.local scale. I remember back in the mists of time, the first time I was trying to do this, I was trying to modify the value transform.local scale directly, which Unity doesn't allow you to do. So you always need to generate a new vector three with the scale values, do all your processing on that, and then apply it back to the transform.local scale. That's a little gotcha you might run into or you might have run into, which may be why you're watching this video. So hopefully you guys find that useful. And I'm thinking about going back and doing a version where we spawn the robots on top of these rocks, which is gonna require a little more control of order of operations. And I think might be an interesting way to tie together multiple techniques. So keep an eye out on the channel for that. As always, if you're enjoying the content, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications. Drop me a like. It helps this channel and these videos to be discovered by the YouTube algorithm, which encourages me to keep making them. And uh, leave me a comment down below if you have something that you're curious about, you have a question about any of this, uh, or if you have a request for a topic for a future video, I always love to see those. So as always, I really appreciate your spending a little bit of time with me and thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Thank you.